Hello again, everybody. We're going to talk here about photokeratitis. So this falls under the disorders of the cornea. It's closely linked to keratitis in as much as it has similar symptoms, red eye, tearing, photophobia. Uh, however, there's a major difference in that uh, photokeratitis is caused from UV radiation, whereas these other causes of keratitis that I spoke about in a different section uh, th these are caused from infectious agents. So I wanted to separate this out because this has a little bit different uh, etiology and uh, a little bit different treatment. Uh, so uh, in addition, uh, we're also going to talk not in this section, but uh, later about corneal abrasion as well as some other disorders including the corneal dystrophies. So this is the cornea here. This That would be this layer that sort of looks like it's bulging out here. I don't know if it really bulges out that much, but uh, uh, the cornea is consistent with the sclera, which is the white of the eye, and you have here uh, a clear uh, layer. So the cornea is clear. It's not white like the sclera, and of course that makes perfect sense because if it weren't clear, then you wouldn't be able to conduct light through the lens and ultimately to the retina. So the cornea is clear, and it's made up of uh, a couple thin layers of cells and collagen. Collagen is, is what makes up the stroma and that's the main, uh, the largest portion of the cornea. But it is clear, it has no blood vessels, it gets its nutrients solely through the tear film and uh, through the anterior aqueous. All right. So here is a uh, histology of the cornea and you don't need to memorize this by any means. This is step one stuff, but I just added it in here to uh, sort of help wrap your head around what the cornea is, what it looks like. Uh, so this is on the outside here. This is uh, outside of the body. This is in towards the middle of the globe on the left side here. So on the outside you have an epithelium, and that is a stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, you have a thin layer here that's called Bauman's membrane or Bauman's layer. Then this thicker layer, the thickest layer of the cornea, is all stro stroma. It's called the stroma. It's just made up of collagen. Uh, you have Decimet's membrane, which is the basement membrane for the stroma. And then you have uh, an endothelium. And then interior to that would be your anterior aqueous. So photokeratitis is a disruption of the corneal epithelium due to UV radiation exposure, which results uh, due to the disruption in a mild inflammatory response, which involves the cornea and uh, also the conjunctiva as well. UV light is the most common cause of radiation injury to the eye, and this makes sense that it affects the cornea because the cornea absorbs most of the UV radiation. Now this isn't something that you're going to get if you go outside and go and get your mail or even if you drive a few miles in real uh, in, in, in the sun. Uh, this is something that you get from very typical risk factors. It's, uh, it's not something that's it's not something that you get just from incidental daily exposure to the sun. So what are some of these risk factors? Well here where I work in Minnesota, uh, we see a lot of skiers and snowboarders that come in with symptoms consistent with keratitis. And that is because the snow reflects 80% of UV radiation. And so because of that, if you consider it reflects 80% of the radiation, it doesn't mean that it reflects 80% of the brightness, 80% of the UV radiation, it's almost like you're staring into the sun while you're uh, skiing or snowboarding. And so very, very important that skiers and snowboarders wear, uh, they wear sunglasses. Also, uh, people who use snowmobiles, anything where you're out in the snow for a prolonged period of time. Uh, you also see this with indoor tanning beds. Uh, certainly, you're at much higher risk to get uh, photokeratitis if you're in one of those indoor tanning beds versus if you're just outside tanning. Uh, flood lamps, halogen lamps, and then welders. Welders use a tool that causes UV radiation. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but welders use, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an arc, uh, so they, they, they call it arc keratitis, carbon arc keratitis, or welder's keratitis.
Okay, so the symptoms are uh, just like any kind of keratitis. Eye discomfort, uh, usually it's a foreign body sensation, uh, mild to moderate pain. However, in photokeratitis, typically it's going to be bilateral because both eyes are exposed at the same time. Uh, whereas in just regular old keratitis, infectious keratitis, it may be that just one eye is infected. That's perfectly possible, if not more common. Uh, but in photokeratitis, it's usually a bilateral presentation. And like I said, it's either a foreign body, gritty sensation, or uh, mild to moderate pain. Uh, this is also uh, combined with a marked photophobia, and that just reflects what the cause is. Uh, so the patient will not want to open their eyes. Now, photophobia is a, uh, is a symptom with any keratitis, but photophobia will be specifically marked in photokeratitis. You also see conjunctival injection, which uh, represents the fact that that inflammation has uh, uh, included the conjunctiva tearing and then a decreased visual acuity. And that's due to any uh, inflammation in the, uh, in the uh, cornea as well as uh, the superficial punctate keratitis, which we're gonna see in a little bit, which is a, kind of one of the diagnostic hallmarks of photokeratitis. Uh, on exam, you may note lid edema. Uh, you can note hyperemia of the palpebral conjunctiva if you, uh, if you revert the, uh, the lids. In very severe cases, you may see a diffuse corneal haze. I've never seen one in a photokeratitis case, and I've probably seen seven or eight of these. So just back in the day, the Inuits, which are a native population in uh, North America, used to use bones to shield their eyes from uh, the UV radiation. Uh, they live up in the, the Canadian Arctic. Uh, of course, dogs and other animals that are used for service purposes or for recreational purposes benefit from having sunglasses. I'm not sure if this is the common way that they wear them, but it uh, looks kind of cool. And then this is typically how uh, skiers and snowboarders will wear, their, uh, will wear their sunglasses. Very important to prevent this. So the differential for photokeratitis is, of course, any other cause of red eye. So our differential for red eye specifically includes conjunctivitis, acute anterior uveitis, acute angle closure glaucoma. With photokeratitis, the, the patient will typically have a normally reacting pupil, uh, and that will set it apart from acute anterior uveitis or an acute angle closure glaucoma. In some cases, if it's really, really severe, the patient may have a reactive meiosis, but typically the patient will have a normally reacting pupil. Uh, visual acuity is usually slightly reduced, and that stands in contrast to the acute angle closure glaucoma, where the patient's uh, vision will be extremely reduced, usually just to hand motions, and conjunctivitis, where the patient's vision is not reduced at all. Uh, there may be tearing, but there is never any discharge. Other causes of keratitis uh, should be in your differential as well as corneal abrasion, but photokeratitis can often be connected to a preceding event, especially if you're work working up in the northern areas, uh, skiing, snowboarding, uh, snowmobiling, being outside in the snow, uh, where the patient was exposed to high amounts of UV light and didn't use protection. The symptoms will be delayed from the exposure for about six to eight hours. So this will typically present in the evening or at nighttime because the patient is out during the daytime when they're getting exposed. And I just wanna go back real quick. Uh, when you're doing your exam, typically you're going to have to give the patient a topical NSAID in order to get at their eyes because the patient will really not want to open their eyes. So just, just to add that. All right, so uh, for diagnosis, what we use is just like pretty much any other keratitis uh, to get at the diagnosis for that, we use fluorescein staining because remember, we can't see the cornea, so we need to use something that will help us see the cornea if in fact the epithelium is, is, uh, is en encroached upon. So uh, the way to think about this is fluorescein staining, if you just put it on a healthy cornea, it's not going to stick. However, if the epithelium is denuded, if, it's, uh, if, it's, if you have an ulcer or if you have an abrasion or if the epithelium is, is, is removed, then the fluorescein will, will stick. It will stick to the Bauman's membrane. 
and so you will note a defect. Uh, so you use fluorescein staining and the cobalt blue lamp will help you see where the fluorescein has stuck and, uh, and it will look green as opposed to blue. And we call the, uh, the way this appears, we call this superficial punctate keratitis, this diffuse uptake. So this is what it looks like. You don't really see any, uh, any ulcers, like if you look at the, uh, the ulcers in keratitis, infectious keratitis, you usually have one larger uh, lesion. Here we just have these little lesions that we can see, this little punctate lesions as the name implies, superficial punctate keratitis. Okay, down here too. And they're all around the cornea. Here's another one, a little bit more severe, but you can see again here, superficial punctate lesions. Okay, the treatment is going to be, of course, while the patient is there, usually you're going to have to do this in order to examine the patient, a topical NSAID um, used either in the ED or in the clinic. Uh, you can use uh, Ketorolac, Diclofenac, uh, there might be more, uh, but these are the two that I'm uh, aware of. Uh, this will predictably improve the patient's symptoms. Now, where the controversy comes in is what do we do when we send the patient home? For sure, we're going to send them home with a, an, either uh, to use over-the-counter NSAIDs or a prescription NSAID, the PO NSAID. That's perfectly fine. And you can even give them a PO narcotic acetaminophen like Tylenol-3 or oxycodone acetaminophen uh, for breakthrough really severe pain. The controversy, though, comes in do we give them a topical NSAID to use? And for a while, the prevailing consensus was no, because NSAIDs increase the time it takes to heal, and we want these patients to heal. Uh, however, some sources do support the use of outpatient uh, topical NSAIDs, and that would include the American Academy of Family Practitioners, as well as the American Academy of Ophthalmologists. So if the ophthalmologists say it's generally okay, then I think I'm comfortable with it. So some sources do discourage it, uh, citing increased healing time and abuse, but uh, traditionally these are used. It is technically off-label to prescribe a patient with topical NSAIDs for outpatient use. So I would recommend avoiding, if you're in test-taking purposes, I would recommend not doing it because it's off-label. Uh, I would recommend just discharging them with a PO NSAID and a PO uh, oxycodone acetaminophen for, uh, for breakthrough pain. Uh, but in real practice, it's very commonplace for practitioners to send patients home with a topical, a limited dose of the topical uh, NSAID. Uh, and uh, you're going to see this in, in most cases. So it's, it's a, one of those off-label uses that's very commonly done. But for test-taking purposes, in general, it's good to avoid off-label treatments. And then in addition, uh, you'll want to give the patient education. They should avoid exposure to the sun while it's healing uh, and use UV filtering lenses in the future when they're going out skiing or snowboarding or snowmobiling or whatever they're doing. Uh, and if the pain hasn't improved after 48 hours, uh, they should return for reevaluation. Uh, and that's because photokeratitis, as well as a lot of the other keratitises, they tend to heal uh, relatively quickly. Uh, so, I, I mean, some of the other keratitises will usually need uh, antibiotics. But uh, when you're talking about photokeratitis, just a superficial, uh, superficial lesions to the uh, epithelium. And also when you talk about corneal abrasions, this is a very, th this doesn't take long to heal because the, uh, the cornea has a very quick cell turnover time. So if the pain has not improved after 48 hours, you definitely need to reevaluate the patient. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, oh, one thing uh, I did want to bring up. Uh, if you work in a high altitude environment, you may see this more because UV light uh, increases by 4% 
uh, for every 1,000 feet. So if you compare New Orleans or New York, which is at sea level, to Denver, which is about 5,000 feet above sea level, uh, people in Denver are exposed to about 20% more UV light than people on the coast. And also people in Denver tend to be out, uh, because they're in the mountains, they tend to be uh, also uh, skiing and doing winter activities like that. So if you work in a, uh, in a high altitude environment, then you should be uh, acutely uh, concerned about this because it's far more likely. All right, with that said, uh, I'll see you next time.